Hey guys, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer, and today I'm talking about repeat sizes for textile designs. So one of you guys wrote in and asked, how do I spec the repeat size for my designs? How do I define it? How do I know what my manufacturer is going to need the repeat size to be in? Do I have any templates that I use? And my first answer to this is that you need to ask your manufacturer, because depending on how the pattern is printed, uh, the repeat sizes are going to vary. And so you're going to need to kind of spec it per their needs and how you're printing it. That being said, I want to show you guys a couple resources and show you about how I would go about doing this if I had the specs from a manufacturer. So first, let's take a look at this website and I'll link to this in the notes of the show. But there's this uh, chart for repeat and fabric sizes. Um, it's pulled off Cornell. I just found this on Google. And you can see if you look through here for apparel, you can see a uh, flatbed screen is rarely used in the US, so we're not gonna look at that um, unless our manufacturer told us that's, that's what we were gonna be using. But let's say we're using a rotary screen, which is basically a screen that's round and it's rolled onto the fabric. And so you can see, um, depending on how you wanna prep, prep, if you wanna prep in metric or American, I'm gonna prep in American because those are the sizes I'm used to. Uh, my different sizes are 25 and a quarter, 27 and 36. So I'm gonna work with 36 and then my horizontal repeat size is any size evenly divisible into the width of the fabric. So I'm gonna assume my fabric is 54 inches wide. Again, this is something you'd wanna ask your manufacturer. What size rotary screen are they using and what is the width of your fabric going to be? So we're gonna work with 36 and 54. So our repeat size can be anything divisible by those two numbers vertically and horizontally. So I'm gonna jump over to Illustrator and I've got some motifs already drawn here. And if you're wondering how I created these, I'll show you really quickly because I get questions a lot of the time about how did you actually create that artwork that I see in your artboard? And if I select all these, you can see they're actually just ovals. And so there's some really cool things you can do. So I'm just gonna, whoops, I'm gonna draw an oval. I'm gonna come up to Effect, uh, Distort and Transform. This is a really, really fun place to play around with. Um, I think for this one, I chose Ruffin. And I'm going to turn my preview on and you can see I can create some really funky stuff. Okay. So this again, effect, distort and transform. You can create all sorts of crazy stuff, starting with a simple circle or a single path. It doesn't have to be a fill color. Um, play around with that and you can get some really cool stuff. So I'm going to delete that. Instead, I'm going to select my motifs that I'm going to create my pattern from. And I'm going to come up to uh, edit, uh, excuse me, object pattern make. So I'm in the current version of CC, so I have the pattern making feature. If you're in CS5 or earlier, you don't have this, and I have previous tutorials on how to create a pattern in CS5, um, but we're gonna assume we are in the newer version of Illustrator, and you can see my pattern has been added. Now, a couple things that happen. When you jump into pattern editing mode, this artwork is no longer shown as a circle. Any effects um, that we have from this menu up here is going to be expanded. So now these are all these individual vector paths, which is fine, just something to be aware that that happens. Now our pattern options dialog comes up. If we don't see it, it's under window pattern options. What I'm going to do is since this is in points, I'm gonna change my document setup. So I can come up to file document setup and I wanna change into inches. Whoops, not millimeters, inches. So I'll choose okay. Now I can see my repeat in inches. So let's jump back. I already forgot what numbers I'm working with. I'm working with 36 and 54. I'm assuming my fabric width is 54. So I want anything vertical divided by 36 and anything horizontal divided by 54. So one of the cool things in Illustrator is that it does math for you. So I want my, uh, let's see, I already forgot. Uh, vertical is 36. So my vertical would be my height. So my height, I wanna say, let's say it is 36 divided by six. And I just hit the tab key and that does the math for me. And my width is anything divided by 54. So 54 divided by, let's say six as well. So now I've got a repeat size, which is nine by six inches, which I know is perfectly gonna fit on my rotary uh, screen at my factory. Again, these are numbers I'm just pulling out of my head. You wanna double check with your manufacturer or your printer to see what specs that you need to prep with. And then from here, I can just create a fun repeat. The other thing I'll mention in here is that um, something that can happen with your repeat is depending on how you're prepping the artwork, you 
might get some errors if you have motifs that bleed off both the right hand side as well as the left hand side, especially if you're working with solid blocks of color and you've got a background. So let's add a background. I'm just gonna create a rectangle here and we will go with a really light gray for the background and then we'll choose object arrange, send to back. Now I want to work specifically with the left hand side and the top of my repeat tile. And so what that means is that all my motifs, including this solid background color, I'm gonna have bleeding off the left-hand side and the top. What happens is, I sometimes have to push this really far over to the left and really high up to make it not sort of crop some of my motifs, okay? So I just have to push this really far over to the left and really far over to the right. But what happens is if I have these other motifs coming off the other side, I can get weird results in my pattern. So if I want this motif right here, that's fine. I would just wanna put it on this side. So just be mindful of um, where you place your motifs when you're working and you're gonna wanna pay attention to bleed off the top and the left or the right and the bottom. Whatever you do, you wanna choose one horizontal axis that your motifs bleed off of and one vertical axis that your motifs bleed off of um, to ensure that your pattern works correctly. Now, I'm not doing an amazing job of creating a pattern here. We're just kinda of moving some of these motifs around and doing something really quickly. Let's do one quick thing. I'm gonna select all of the motifs, hold the shift key to deselect the background, and I'm gonna do Command C, Command V, and we're just gonna make this kind of a little bit of a shadow effect. All right, so something a little more fun. We'll go ahead and click done. Now let's move these motifs off. You'll notice the motifs from before did not lose their circle. circle uh, they did not expand into the actual vector. And what's great about this is that this artwork now, if you come over to your appearance panel under window appearance, if you don't see it, you've got this roughen effect applied to it and you can always come in. This is a dynamic effect. You can always come in and change this later. Whoops, with our preview on, I can actually see what's happening. Okay, so you lose the ability to change that later if you bring it in to a pattern swatch and you delete this artwork here. But if we don't delete this artwork, we still have our original swatches, um, excuse me, our original shapes, which we could adjust the, the rough in later. And now what I can do is I can come over to my swatch panel and here's my pattern swatch. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and I'll just make an instance of my pattern swatch on my artboard. And there it is. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I am so Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer. I would love to give you more free resources, tutorials, templates, and fashion design assets that you do not see here on YouTube. Check out my website at successfulfashiondesigner.com. Sign up for the email list, and I will send you all sorts of things that you don't see here. I would love to get to know you more. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.